I felt very, very strongly when I was approached about the possibility of representing gay and lesbian Californians. I grew up in California. I felt that it was wrong what was happened with Proposition 8. And I was glad to have the opportunity to do this. But I also felt that I might be very sus suspect, not just by conservatives, what, uh, what is Ted Olson doing? Um, and I don't mean to exaggerate myself here, but I mean, I knew that there was going to be some of that, and I knew that there was going to be skepticism and criticism from gay and lesbian organizations and from the, from the left. Uh, what, uh, what is he up to? And so forth. And that's one of the reasons why David and I came together on this. I thought that was extremely important that we present this as not a left or right conservative or liberal issue, but it was an American constitutional issue. And that if the two of us... I felt that if the two of us who had been on opposite sides of the Bush versus Gore case, because lots of people watched that contest and watched that legal issue, and then could see, think of it, gave us the opportunity not only to reflect opposite parts of the political spectrum. I won't say opposite poles because David and I are awfully close on an awful lot of issues, um, maybe more than people that we watch. differ on. Um, but that if the American people could see the two of us come together who are, we're in a way representative of opposite ends of the political spectrum and that, and that people would be curious about why we did come together and what we had to say. It would give us an opportunity to help educate the American people, help persuade the American people that this, was, this cause was just. With respect to conservatives, I felt that if I could just speak to conservatives um, and talk about the issues, among the other things uh, that we talked about, I wrote a piece that was on the cover of Newsweek. Um, in that, that, that came out uh, the same day that we started our, same week that we started our trial in San Francisco. I call it the conservative case for gay marriage. And I made the points there that I think are very fundamentally true. Gar marriage is a coming together of two individuals who love one another, who want to build a family, who want to build a relationship in a community. They want to be part of the community. They want to be part of the school system. They want to be part of the municipal government. They want to pay taxes. They want to be respected as a stable, conservative part of the community. What could be more conservative than that? And does marriage between those loving individuals damage heterosexual relationships or heterosexual marriage? Does anybody think that uh, a man and a woman are not going to get married because a gay couple gets married next door or down the street or they're going to refrain from having children or they're going to, they're going to somehow get a divorce. No, that's nonsense.